coming to you with words and teaching that will change your life forever. All things that you will ever need in your life, they're wrapped up in the Word. Go for the Word. You need to understand this thing. And when you get a hold of it, keep saying it. Don't stop talking it. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. The Bible says in the city of Ephesus, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Can you shout amen? I'm set on the course that I must follow. In the name of Jesus, prosperity is mine. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Yay! Pastor Chris, word hearing. Ezekiel third chapter. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We started from the second chapter. Ezekiel chapter number 2, beginning with verse 1. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. Who's talking? God's talking. He says, he, he, he tells a man, get up, and I will talk to you. God says, get up. The Spirit of God says to man, get up. All right, watch it now. He said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered into me. When he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. Woo! Did you hear that? Here, the Spirit of God was on the outside and he's talking to him. And he says, Get up. And then the Spirit of God, see, that's another one. Are you hearing me? He says, The Spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet. I got up. Have you ever found yourself that way? You thought you were so tired. Some of you don't understand these things. See, you thought you were so tired. You know, I, I just can't. Um, oh, Father, thank you for this day. You know, you're just feeling weak. And thank you in Jesus' name. You know, you're just, just tired. And, and you're hearing, get up and pray. It's a little authoritative, I tell you. Get up and pray. You feel, mm, but God understands that I'm tired. So, Rababa, Suntoro, Momomol, Sondro. The next thing, before you understand what's going on, Robaka Sayara. Hey, hallelujah. What happened to you? I thought you said you were weak. I thought you said you were tired. I thought you said you couldn't do this now. And here you are pacing the floor. What's going on? He sets you upon your feet. Hallelujah. But because we don't recognize these things and we feel we're the ones doing them, that's the reason the Spirit of God doesn't do much in our lives for us to see. Because all the time we give the credit to ourselves. We say, well, as I was praying, I just felt like standing up. Uh -uh, not Ezekiel. Ezekiel says, he set he entered into me and set me upon my feet. Because I didn't want to get up. I was too tired to get up. I didn't want to get up. The man said, get up. I wasn't ready to get up. But he set me upon my feet. Glory to God. <laughs> and he did that for a lot of you. I'm telling you. You got up of that bed. You, you didn't want to get up. It was too cold. You said, mm, I'll wake up an hour later. <sighs> but in five minutes, my God, you got up. Hallelujah. You thought you were going to talk a little. Sometimes come on, you started talking until somebody said, there are other people sleeping, please. Pipe down. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, come on here. We're not through yet. And then we come to the third chapter. And notice something. In the third chapter, we haven't read that the Spirit went out of him yet. He entered into, into him. He hasn't gone out of him. And yet in the twelfth verse of the third chapter, he says, Then the Spirit took me up. <laughs> ah. Look at verse 14. So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away. And I went in, the, in bitterness in the heat of my spirit. Listen, he says the Spirit took me up. He lifted me up. He took me away. That's got to be an outside force. This is the Spirit of the Lord. 
You want to see that in the New Testament? Come on. Let's go. Tell somebody, let's go. Let's go. Woo, let's go. Book of Acts. We're in the eighth chapter. Book of Acts. Verse 39 says, And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord. Now, every time you find that rendering in the New Testament, watch it. When it says, The Spirit of the Lord. Not just the Spirit, but it says, The Spirit of the Lord. Because, you see, the Spirit of God does dwell in, in God's people. He lives in us. And, and, and Philip had the Holy Ghost in him. He had the Holy Ghost in him. But this is another function of the Holy Spirit who was outside. Now watch this. He says, and when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. He caught him, took him away. That's from the outside. He caught him away. Hello? I said the Spirit caught him away. Carried him. That's from the outside. That's the spirit that the Lord was talking about when he said, He shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Upon. That's power. You shall receive power. Now, when we're worshiping, that's not power. My soul says here. That's not the power he's talking about. That's wonderful. That's something else. When is the spirit of knowledge? That's something else. What do you mean spirit of knowledge? The Bible says we have received not the spirit of the word, but the spirit which is of God that we might know. That's the spirit of knowledge. That we might know the things that God has given to us freely. That's the spirit of knowledge functioning. That we might know. In Ephesians chapter number 1, when you read the 17th verse, he says, I pray to God that he will grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. In the knowledge of him. That's another one. So they're all consistent with the seven spirits that God we're talking about. That he would grant you. He looked at that church. He found out the men. They had power. They were demonstrating power. They were demonstrating the glory of God. But they lost something. They did not have in demonstration. The spirit of wisdom and revelation. That's what's happened to a lot of people. They have the gifts of God's spirit, you know. They can prophesy. They can have great things happening. But when it comes to understanding the things of God, when it comes to wisdom, they don't understand the word. We have to pray for them that God will grant them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. Then they'll be balanced. Are you following this? In the Corinthian church, it was something else. They, they lacked something. The spirit of the fear of the Lord. When you have the spirit of the fear of the Lord, there, there are things you just won't do. In Corinth, they were scrambling for food. In Corinth, they were sinning. In Corinth, there was a lot of fighting in church. They lacked something, the fear of the Lord. Reverence, the spirit of reverence. Boy, when he walks in, things change. He disciplines people with the spirit of the Lord. Boy, don't you dare him. When he walks in. He does something big and everybody. Quiet. The Bible says Samuel prayed and God sent thunder and lightning. And the people feared the Lord and Samuel. <laughs> you talk about the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Watch out. When Ananias and Sapphira misbehaved, they were struck dead. The Bible says great fear came upon the people. All the time like that, fear comes. By the time the anointing of God is so strong and something happens because the spirit of the fear of the Lord, he insists that you must have reverence. You know, people, you know, they just walk into church anyhow, just, you know, they're looking for their seat, just, you know, just you no know, reverence. And the message is going on, they just, as though you're, you're just on the whole place here. Come on. Come on. Be careful. Find your seat. There's a spirit in this place. 
They don't understand. Every time you give a call and say, well, someone over here, a man is being healed of something. You say, I want that man to come forward. A woman is coming forward. <laughs> she heard you all right. That's something she doesn't have. That's the spirit of the fear of the Lord. But I've seen people like that knocked down under the anointing of God's spirit. And you know, when that happens, nobody wants to come again. I remember several years ago, you know, we were ministering and, um, hallelujah. And as we were ministering, so I lay hands on people, you know, and then uh, there were these guys who were helping to hold them, stopping them from, as they, uh, because we were on the field. See, the whole place was cold. It was nighttime and we're on the field. So, as I lay hands on them, and then they'll go like this, and then it's just a hold them, you know, this gentleman, not wanting the clothes to be stained. And they were, I don't know, special ushers. I don't know who chose them to do that. But, <clears throat> so I was watching this thing. I didn't say anything. Well, a few days later, I, I went fasting and praying. You know, by the time you fast and pray, something happens. Some of you don't believe in fasting. I do. So, well, I went fasting and praying. I said, three days, three days, just three days. By the time I'm back, three days, my God, that place will be burning. Three days. So I went praying. And by the time I was through my hands, you know, my, 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 I was ready. And so we had this meeting. And then I began laying hands. And, and here came these ushers again. <laughs> so I laid hands on the first one. And he just went, woo. And the usher that touched him went with him. The next usher came and he went along. Then the other guy stepped back. <laughs> Nobody, I mean, it was free fall. Everybody else just went whoops, whoops, whoops. Nobody wanted to hold anybody. <laughs> it was no, no, <laughs> just go. <laughs> Hallelujah. You understand what I'm talking about? There's a time when the Spirit of God comes into a place and he insists on reverence. 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 Didn't have that in Corinth. Sad. Didn't have that in Corinth. But there's a spirit of match. You know, I talk about a lot of times people, they just read the Bible. It's so nice to read the Bible. Just read the Bible every time. Teach, 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 preach, preach, preach. Read the Bible. Sing, sing, sing. Preach, preach, preach. Sing. No, just all that quiet, calm. We preach, we sing, we pray, we go. We preach, we sing, we pray, we go. We preach, we sing, we pray, we go. Boy, give me some power. Hallelujah. The Bible says the kingdom of God is not in word only, but in power. Hallelujah. There's nothing as deadening as a man who is preaching power without power. He says, I didn't come in with words of men's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Give me some power. We have to know the spirit of might. Hallelujah. We have to know the spirits of the Lord. There is an anointing. That anointing is different. Speaking some years ago, you see, when that anointing takes over you, people are the, they explain it in so many different ways. But you've got to know the spirit. It's not just the, the gift in manifestation. No. I remember when I was, pre I was preaching, and um, that was about um, one of the first few times I began to observe this thing. See, there are some things that happen to you in the spirit and you don't know them until you start studying the word of God and then they, they, they keep happening consistently. So I, I always wait for that anointing to heat. When it does, I know more than anybody else that something is going on right now. Sometimes when I'm praying alone and I can tell the spirit of the Lord just... You know, just like that man says, he entered into me. I can tell something has happened. I can tell. I can tell my hands. It's like his own hands have gone in. I can tell his legs have gone in. I can tell I'm not just me moving now. I can tell someone is moving in me. <laughs> Glory to God. I can tell because he was to lay hands through me. I can tell. I can tell. I can tell. So I was preaching, you know, that was 1986 years ago and i just went up 10 minutes into the message there's a crippled guy sitting in front his crutches beside him and it's 10 minutes i've just started preaching and i was suddenly full of the spirit i wasn't planning to i wasn't planning to i wasn't thinking about it and i just turned to him and got a hold of him as it walk in jesus name Pulled him out and the guy started walking and he was walking and of course everybody was selling to the ceiling glory to god 
And then we went on and had more. And all that night, this guy would walk to and fro. He would walk again. I took his crutches, put them away. I said, keep working, glory to God. And he went on. He couldn't walk. Oh, glory to God. Yes. That's when the Spirit of the Lord takes over. You, you, you don't think it. You don't reason, what am I going to do now? Remember, years ago, that was 1985. You know, I used to give all these kind of stories. And people say, where was it 1985? Yeah, I used to give them. So, what was what, preaching? And uh, so strong wind blowing. The rain's about to come in. And, and the place was so dusty, so sandy. And so the, the wind would raise up so much dust. And, and bring it against the people. And then everybody wanted to run away. And I was grieved in my spirit. You know, sometimes you can be grieved in your spirit, but you can't do nothing yet. Because you don't want to do anything dumb. So I, I was there, but I was grieved in my spirit. I was thinking all this time, what's going on? What is this? And some people started going away because it was, it was so cloudy. It was obvious we're going to have a heavy downpour. And I'm still thinking, what am I going to do now? Hmm. And I'm preaching, I'm preaching. And they're doing like this, you know, the, the wind's coming against them. And they're trying to listen, and some are going and trying to listen. And I'm going, and my jacket's flying already in the wind. <laughs> then suddenly, that unction came. I, I didn't know what I said. I heard it on the tape later. I didn't know what I said. I uttered some words, I didn't know what I said. But while playing the tape later, I called somebody, I said, did I say that? I said, but that's not your hearing it. I didn't know what I said. I, I said, when I listened to it later, I said, wind not this way. I said, turn around and go that way. I only remember the people were clapping, but I didn't know what I said. It, but I saw the dust move like this and turn the other way. <laughs> Just like that. But I only heard it on the tape later. That's the spirit of the Lord. You don't have to think nothing. When he caught away Philip, Philip didn't have to prepare for it. He didn't have to say, now I'm about to Johnny. I'm about to go to Hazardous. Nobody knows when I'm going, but I know I'm sure going. He wasn't talking faith. The Spirit just caught him and took him away. But you see, the Bible says, if you are a vessel that's prepared, you will be ready and fit for the master's use. See, because God wants to use you, but he wants you to be sanctified. He wants you to be ready. He wants you to be separated. He wants you to be cleansed. Then you will be ready for him to use you. Just because you have the Holy Ghost doesn't mean God's going to do anything with you. Are you hearing this? Now everybody's getting quiet now. You didn't want to hear that. Wanted to hear, well, no matter how you behave, God's going to take you up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, that's the spirit of the Lord. That's the spirit of the Lord. You talk about the spirit of cancer. Some of you, 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 this is what you need in your life. See, you need the spirit of cancer. The spirit of cancer. What does he do? He, he guides you. Psalms, the book of Psalms, 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 chapter number 16, 16, are you there? I'm trying to get there, chapter 16, book of Psalms, and he says, oh, I like it, he says, ah, are you there? He says, I will bless the Lord who had given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. Did you see that? He says, I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. He talks about my reins. That means in my inward man. You see, I'm instructed in the night seasons. He says, the Lord's given me counsel. I'm instructed in the night seasons. I'm instructed. God instructs me. That's the spirit that instructs you, that guides you. That's the spirit by which the Lord guides your life. Did you ever read in the 16th chapter of the book of Acts? Come on, go in there. Book of Acts, 16th chapter. Are you getting anything? <laughs> Start getting ready. Start getting ready. There shall be a fullness tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Woo, glory. Acts chapter 16, and I'm reading from verse number 6. 
Now when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Did you notice that? He says they were forbidden of the Holy Ghost. He says, I bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My reigns also instruct me. That's the spirit of counsel. He instructs me. He tells me what to do. And the man wanted to go to preach in Asia. He says, but the Holy Ghost forbade them. After they were come to Mysia, they are said to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit permitted them not. Who's this? The Spirit of counsel. The Spirit of counsel. That's one of the seven spirits of God. The Spirit of counsel. You can look at the, the, the 11th chapter of the book of Acts. 11th chapter of the book of Acts, and I'm reading from the 11th verse. <clears throat> it says here, And behold, immediately there were three men already come on to the house where I was. Now Peter, Peter is telling what happened in the 10th chapter. So let's just go on. It says, um, And behold, immediately there were three men already come on to the house where I was, sent from Caesarea unto me. And the Spirit bade me go with them. The Spirit bade me go. The Spirit told me to go. Has the Spirit ever told you to do something? Has he instructed you before? Are you acquainted with the spirit of counsel? Or do you find yourself always wanting advice from people? Do you have the spirit of counsel? Have you let him do some work in your life? Let the spirit of counsel function in you. He'll talk to you. He'll instruct you. These men wanted to go to preach the word in Asia. The spirit suffered them not. He said, don't go. Peter was preaching, in the, uh, praying in the house of Simon the Tanner. And then the Spirit of God said, hey, three men seek you. He says, I've sent them. Go with them. He says, the Spirit bade me go. He can tell you to do something. He, he can tell you not to. He can direct you in your life. This is the spirit of counsel. I said, we see, when, when these seven spirits of God are functioning in your life, no confusion, never. You're balanced. You're full of power. You're full of the word because the spirit of wisdom and knowledge. He says, I pray to God that he'll grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That's revelation knowledge. In the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding, being enlightened. That's the spirit of understanding working. Where? Oh, look at it. It's all here. Go back to Ephesians, the, the, the third chapter. You see, all of them are here. Oh, glory to God. Ephesians, third chapter. From verse 16 it says that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might. That's the spirit of might. By his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That the anointing may dwell in your hearts by faith. That he being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend. Comprehend. That's understanding. With all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. And to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge. Hallelujah. This is beautiful. God wants to do something in your life. He wants to. He wants to. He wants to. It's not right for you to be walking in a measure. You'll be losing. If the, is there room in your life for the Spirit? Is there room for Him? Is there still any space for Him? Or you have filled all the rooms of your heart with all kinds of wrong stuff? Is there any space? Is there room for Him? Do you still have a place in your life for him? Are you sure? Are you sure you have a place for him? You know in St. Luke's Gospel, the fourth chapter, in the 18th verse, 
Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For the Lord hath anointed me to preach deliverance. Liberty. See, that's the one that, that, that helps you with power to do things. And tonight, that spirit is also functioning here. Amen. He's functioning here. You can be a pastor. You've got to have the spirit of the Lord anoint you. That unction has to be there. Otherwise, it'll be empty. Remember, the spirit of God is a person. He is not a thing. He is not any fluid. He's not water. He's not a cloud. He's not gas. He's not. He is a person. So don't think like, well, they put all on me. That all still on me. If it was on me then, it's still there now. Doesn't matter how greasy you may be. The Spirit of God, you cannot box him. All you may have left. Maybe one of the seven spirits of God in your life. Just to be there to make sure you get to heaven. You know that? For some people, that's all they've got left. Because the Spirit of God, the Bible says, the seven, these are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. See, the Spirit of God in His full manifestation is working all over the world. He's always working, always doing something. Always. You can find someone, a Christian, whose life is just, he's just there. He's just there. He reads the Bible. He prays. How does he pray? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for today, for tomorrow, and yesterday. <laughs> That's about how it is. Bless me and my family. Bless everybody. Bless the whole world. Take care of the government. Thank you. For some, plus God, minus devil. <laughs> that settles it for the day. In fact, for some, it's for the week. Some pray. <laughs> they pray today's prayer for, for seven days. They say, I want to pray for the week because I, I go to work very early. And, uh, I can't afford to. So I'm going to pray all my prayer for the week. You know, they store prayers. There's a reservoir. You know, so Sunday service, they will pray, 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 pray. Every opportunity we have to pray. Say, Lord, for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, this is just, just, you know, get this stuff full with prayer. Then they can do whatever they like. From Monday till Saturday. Sunday again, the weekly prayer. Brothers and sisters in Christ. The manner that God sends. He said, you don't keep it. He said, you got to eat it. And you must eat it today. He said, don't keep it for tomorrow. No. He told us we are to do this thing every day. We require God's guidance in our lives every day. Yesterday's guidance will not suffice for today. And today's will not suffice for tomorrow. We have to have a relationship with him today. In the now of our lives. Today. We walk in Him today. Today. If you will let Him take charge of your day. Who? Oh, and say, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. I understand from the Word of God that you're in charge of my circumstances. But I let you. Lord, I pray you are Lord of my life. I pray that you order my steps today in the course that you have planned for me already. I want to meet only the people that you planned for me to meet today and hear the things you planned for me to hear and say the things you planned for me to say. And I, I, I function as a child of God today in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I walk in your life. That's the way I pray. I'm telling you. I walk in the light today, in the name of the Lord Jesus. There's nobody coming into my world as an accident today. No, the spirit of dominion is at work in me today. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I refuse to fear. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Though I walk to the valley of the shadow of fear, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I refuse, glory to God. I refuse to be defeated today, because I'm a victor in Christ Jesus. Lord, I'm more than a conqueror. In the name of the Lord Jesus, your work is, a, look at me. See, by the time I start praying, 
I, I start moving like this. I, 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 I'm prophesying already. I'm going like that. There's an anointing. Oh, your presence is here today. I have the spirit of excellence. My God, I thank you. The spirit of excellence at work in me. I do not act foolishly. I do not talk foolishly. No one's going to hear me say a word that's foolish. No, the wisdom of God is found in my mouth today. I give counsel by the spirit today. I walk with men and women by the spirit today. I see with the eyes of God today. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord God, I thank you. Because good things are coming my way today. I receive in the name of Jesus. And I'm a giver today. I'm a blessing today in the name of the Lord Jesus my body is yielded to you oh Lord my God every every fiber of my, 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 my being every bone of my body is for the Holy Ghost talk to me move through me walk in me talk in me in the name of the Lord Jesus I'm a living tabernacle today in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the time I'm talking like that then I say, glory to God, the health of God is in me. I refuse to let my body be subject to sickness, disease, and infirmity. Every fiber of my being is inundated by the Spirit of God. I am in health in the name of Jesus. I am in health, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. How can you be defeated that way? How can you be defeated that way? How can you be defeated that way? I study the word of God today and I understand. I thank you for the spirit of understanding in the name of the Lord Jesus. And the spirit of knowledge. Lord my God, I can see the word. I can hear the word. I can understand the word. And so it's working in me. It's working in me. And my mouth cannot be short. I will speak boldly the things of God. The revelations of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The word is waiting. Word, I'm coming in the name of Jesus. Boy, I'm talking like that. I'm coming. The nations are waiting. I'm coming. I'm in the name of Jesus. I'm sent of God. I'm commissioned of God. I got a message for the world. They've got to hear it. And they will hear it. In the name of Jesus. And I'm talking like that. And by the time I'm talking like that, you know the anointing. It's just all over me. All over me. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father. My children, my God, the anointing is on them. They can't but do the will of God. They can't but walk the walk of God. They can't but believe in the word of God. In the name of Jesus. And I'm talking like that. No devil hatched out of hell can touch them. I thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Wisdom is in the mouth of my wife and in her heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus. She functions in the things of God today. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray for every one of my staff. Then start calling their names. In the name of the Lord Jesus. They cannot but do the will of God. They cannot but think the thoughts of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Every one of our pastors. In their going out and in their coming in. Not one of them is subject to the devil. In the name of Jesus. The word of God is in their hearts and in their mouth. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh glory. And I'm praying like that. Hallelujah. Boy, that's better than, oh God, help me, help me. That's better than, oh, bless me, bless me. No, because I'm blessed. I said, I'm blessed. And you know, when I lift my hands up to God, I say, Father, I'm so blessed. I'm such a blessed man. My God, I'm so blessed. Lord, I don't know how to say, but I'm so blessed. You bless me so much, I'm embarrassed. I'm so blessed. My God, I'm so blessed. So blessed. So blessed. How can I say it? You said you blessed me, and then you said you blessed me already. And I looked in the world, I found that I was blessed. Now I looked at my life, I found that I was blessed. Everybody that comes into my world is blessed. Don't worry, God, I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, the anointing. By the time I'm talking like that, I'm beginning to feel that thing. I'm beginning to feel that thing. And I start saying, Lord, I, I'm beginning to feel the healing unctions coming. I said, Lord, the healing unction, I, I'm feeling it. I said, Lord, keep doing it. I want to feel it some more. Go ahead and do it. And by the time I look, my God, the unction is here. I said, my Lord is all over me. The power of the Holy Ghost is all over me. Glory to God. Woo, hallelujah. Oh, glory. That's the way I pray. Hallelujah. Because that's the way he told us to pray. That's what he said. When I'm talking like that, I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Sometimes I say, Lord, you told us to be filled with the Spirit, speaking to ourselves in psalms and hymns. Then I say, I'm going to make you some psalms. I'm going to sing some hymns. But when I start doing all of that, I'm full of God's Spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, go ahead. Wave your hand and thank him. Wave your hand and thank him. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Be filled with the Spirit. He has made us kings and priests unto God. He has made us kings and priests unto God. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Sing in the Holy Ghost. Keep dancing in the spirits. Keep praising Him. Rejoice in His presence. Yep. In the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. There's fullness of joy. Get full of the Holy Ghost. 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 Hallelujah. Get full of the Holy Ghost. Ha ha ha. Glory. Yep. 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 Keep laughing in the spirit. My, my, my. That's the Lord of victory. Glory to God. Glory. <laughs> Woo. Glory. <laughs> yeah. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 Get in the flow. God's working in this place. Get in the flow. Hallelujah. Get in the flow. God's working here. God's working here. Get drunk in the Holy Ghost. Get filled with the Spirit. Get filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. Get filled with the Spirit. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Nah. Mm. Ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Glory. Yep. Yep. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. I said the fire of God is burning in your heart tonight. The fire of the Holy Ghost is burning in your heart tonight. It's still burning. It's burning in your heart tonight. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Woo! Glory. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. I. Ah, mm. thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Something is happening in your spirit. As if something is happening in your spirit, something is going on in your spirit. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> Hallelujah. The Bible says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> Hallelujah to Jesus. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Glory! 
Thank you, Lord. Glory. Aye. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God, 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 sing it again. Praise God, 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 praise God. God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. When we get there, ten thousand years, bright shine. And when we first begun, come on, praise God, praise God, wave your hand and sing it to Him, praise God, praise God, praise God. heaven the Lord is in this place why 
what power is manifested in this place tonight what glory what anointing of God's spirit yes mm -hmm. amen hallelujah 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 amen Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, the Spirit of God is in this place. The anointing of God's Spirit is here. And He's working. He's touching your life. There's someone here tonight. You had found yourself backsliding. You had found yourself walking away from the right road. You had found yourself going far away already. But tonight, you felt the Spirit of God say, Come! And you turned around. And tonight, you know that you know the Spirit of God is restoring you. I want you to come here. I want you to come here quick come here come to me now here at the front come you know you were already on your way to the wrong direction in life but the Spirit of God turned your life around tonight you felt him say come come and you stopped right there in your tracks and turned around and you know in your soul tonight tonight the lord has turned your life back again mm, why don't you worship him and sing the song hallelujah yes be filled with the holy ghost here tonight every one of you as you're coming out here get filled with god's spirit just keep worshiping him. Forget about everybody else. The Lord is with you here tonight. Mm. Hallelujah. Yes, that's the power of God on you. That's the power of God on you. That's the power of God on you. Hallelujah. That's the power of God on you. That's the power of the Holy Ghost on your life. Yeah, hallelujah. That's the anointing of God's spirit on your life tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you for the power of God's spirit. No, don't leave. Don't leave. Just keep praising God. Just keep praising God. Don't carry them away. Leave them. Leave them. Leave them. Leave them. Let them just keep praising God. The anointing of God is here. Hallelujah. The power of God is touching your life tonight. The power of God is touching your life tonight. Yes. Yes. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. The power of God is here. Yeah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Amen. Feel with God's spirit tonight. Be filled with God's spirit. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Be filled with the Holy Ghost in your life. Yes, the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Amen. Whoa, 
worship him with all your heart. Hallelujah. That's the power of the Holy Ghost in you. That's the anointing of God's Spirit in your life. Yes. Receive the Holy Ghost in your life. Be filled with God's Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. The power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes. We feel the God's Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. The feel of God's Spirit. The feel of God's Spirit. The feel of God's Spirit. In the name of Jesus. The feel of God's Spirit. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Amen, Hallelujah, 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 Amen. to me the Spirit of God is working he's doing something in you he's doing something in you he's touching you right where you are he's touching you yes right there yes 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 Yes, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with God's Spirit. Be filled tonight. Be filled tonight. With God's Spirit. With God's Spirit. With God's Spirit. Yes. you hear the voice of God's Spirit say come come follow me come can't you hear that voice and he's calling you tonight don't say no don't harden yourself now every one of you say to him all of you out here now say feel me tell him to feel me to overflowing Spirit of the living God, feel me. Tell him, he'll feel you now. Just tell him, he'll feel you now. He'll feel you now. Tell him to feel you. He'll feel you now with God's Spirit. For God's Spirit is God's answer. Yes. Yes. And he's feeling you now. Yes. Yes. Yes, be filled with God's Spirit. And pour your heart, pour your heart and start praying and speaking in other tongues. Go ahead, speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives you utterance. Yes, you're filled with God's Spirit tonight. Yes. Yes. He's doing something in your life. He's doing something in your life. He's doing something in your life. Oh, 
Jesus, oh Jesus, come and feel your love. Jesus, oh Jesus, come and feel your love oh, let the son of god unfold you with his spirit and his love let him feel your heart and satisfy your soul oh let him break the chains that hold you and his spirit like a dog you descend upon your life and make you whole Jesus oh Jesus come and feel your love Let him feel your heart and satisfy your soul. Oh, let him break the chains that hold you and his spirit like a dove will descend upon your life and make you whole. Oh, Pastors over there, lay hands on those that are close to you over there. Lay hands on them. Come and feel your love. on your feet yes yes thank him 
thank Him. The Spirit of God is doing something in your life. And you know it. And you're thankful. And you're thankful. Come and feel your love. Lift your hands toward heaven everywhere. Everywhere. Thank Him. Thank Him. Hallelujah. Come and feel your love. Thank Him. Thank Him. Pour your heart before the Lord and thank Him. Go ahead and thank Him. Thank Him for what He's done for you. Go ahead and thank Him. Go ahead and thank Him. Because the power of the Lord is here. Go ahead and thank Him. The message you've just heard was produced by the Lovell Tape Ministry. For more information, please contact Lovell Tape Ministry. Post office number 13563. Email address cec at christembassy.org or better still, you can find us on the web www.christembassy.org. God bless you. him away carried him that's from the outside that's the spirit that the Lord was talking about when he said he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you upon that's power you shall receive power now when we're worshiping that's not power my soul says here that's not the power he's talking about that's wonderful that's something else. When is the spirit of knowledge? That's something else. What do you mean spirit of knowledge? The Bible says we have received not the spirit of the word, but the spirit which is of God that we might know. That's the spirit of knowledge. That we might know the things that God has given to us freely. That's the spirit of knowledge functioning. That we might know. In Ephesians chapter number 1, when you read the 17th verse, he says, I pray to God that he will grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That's another one. So they're all consistent with the seven spirits of God we're talking about. That he will grant you. He looked at that church, he found out the men, they had power. They were demonstrating power. They were demonstrating the glory of God, but they lost something. They did not have in demonstration the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That's what's happened to a lot of people. They have the gifts of God's spirit, you know. They can prophesy. They can have great things happening. But when it comes to understanding the things of God, when it comes to wisdom, they don't understand the word. We have to pray for them that God will grant them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. Then they'll be balanced. Are you following this? In the Corinthian church, there was something else. They, they lack something. The spirit of the fear of the Lord. When you have the spirit of the fear of the Lord, there, there are things you just won't do. Coming to you with words and teaching that will change your life forever. All things that you will ever need in your life, they're wrapped up in the word. Go for the word. You need to understand this thing. And when you get a hold of it, keep saying it. Don't stop talking it. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. The Bible says in the city of Ephesus, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Can you shout amen? I'm set on the course that I must follow. In the name of Jesus, prosperity is mine. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Yeah. Pastor Chris, word hearing. Ezekiel third chapter. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We started from the second chapter. 
Ezekiel chapter number 2, beginning with verse 1. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. Who's talking? God's talking. He says, he, he, he tells a man, get up, and I will talk to you. God says, get up. The Spirit of God says to man, get up. All right, watch it now. He said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered into me. When he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. Woo. Did you hear that? Here, the Spirit of God was on the outside and he's talking to him. And he says, get up. And then the Spirit of God. See, that's another one. Are you hearing me? He says, the Spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet. Now, get up. Have you ever found yourself that way? You thought you were so tired. Some of you don't understand these things. See, you thought you were so tired. You know, I, I just can't. Um, oh, Father, thank you for this day. You know, you're just feeling weak. And thank you in Jesus' name. You know, you're just, just tired. And you're hearing, get up and pray. It's a little authoritative, I tell you. Get up and pray. You feel, mm, but God understands that I'm tired. So The next thing, before you understand what's going on, Robaka Sayala. Hey, hallelujah. What happened to you? I thought you said you were weak. I thought you said you were tired. I thought you said you couldn't do this now. And here you are pacing the floor. What's going on? He sets you upon your feet. Hallelujah. But because we don't recognize these things and we feel we're the ones doing them, that's the reason the Spirit of God doesn't do much in our lives for us to see. Because all the time we give the credit to ourselves. We say, well, as I was praying, I just felt like standing up. Uh -uh, not Ezekiel. Ezekiel says, he set he entered into me and set me upon my feet. Because I didn't want to get up. I was too tired to get up. I didn't want to get up. The man said, get up. I wasn't ready to get up. But he set me upon my feet. Glory to God. <laughs> and he did that for a lot of you. I'm telling you. You got up of that bed. You, you didn't want to get up. It was too cold. You said, mm, I'll wake up an hour later. <sighs> but in five minutes, my God, you got up. Hallelujah. You thought you were going to talk a little. Sometimes come on, show. You started talking until somebody said, there are other people sleeping, please. Pipe down. Pipe. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, come on here. We're not through yet. And then we come to the third chapter. And notice something. In the third chapter, we haven't read that the Spirit went out of him yet. He had not into him. He hasn't gone out of him. And yet in the twelfth verse of the third chapter, he says, Then the Spirit took me up. <laughs> ah. Look at verse 14. So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away. And I went in, the, in bitterness in the heat of my spirit. Listen, he says the Spirit took me up. He lifted me up. He took me away. That's got to be an outside force. This is the Spirit of the Lord. You want to see that in the New Testament? Come on. Let's go. Tell somebody, let's go. Let's go. Book of Acts. We're in the eighth chapter. Book of Acts. Verse 39 says, And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord. Now, every time you find that rendering in the New Testament, watch it. When it says the Spirit of the Lord. Not just the Spirit. But it says the Spirit of the Lord. Because you see, the Spirit of God does dwell in, in God's people. He lives in us. And, and, and Philip had the Holy Ghost in him. He had the Holy Ghost in him. But this is another function of the Holy Spirit who was outside. Now watch this. It says, and when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. He caught him, took him away. That's from the outside. He caught him away. In Corinth, they were scrambling for food. 
In Corinth, they were sinning. In Corinth, there was a lot of fighting in church. They lacked something, the fear of the Lord. Reverence, the spirit of reverence. Boy, when he walks in, things change. He disciplines people with the spirit of the Lord. Boy, don't you dare him. When he walks in, he does something big and everybody... Quiet. The Bible says Samuel prayed and God sent thunder and lightning. And the people feared the Lord and Samuel. <laughs> you talk about the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Watch out. When Ananias and Sapphira misbehaved, they were struck dead. The Bible says great fear came upon the people. All the time like that, fear comes. By the time the anointing of God is so strong and something happens because the spirit of the fear of the Lord, he insists that you must have reverence. You know, people, you know, they just walk into church anyhow, just, you know, they're looking for their seat, just, you know, just, you know, no reverence. And the message is going on, they just, as though you're, you're just on the whole place here. I'm like, come on, come on, be careful, find your seat. There's a spirit in this place. They don't understand. Every time you give a call and say, well, someone over here, a man is being healed of something. And you say, I want that man to come forward. A woman is coming forward. <laughs> she heard you, all right. There's something she doesn't have. That's the spirit of the fear of the Lord. But I've seen people like that knocked down under the anointing of God's spirit. And you know, when that happens, nobody wants to come again. I remember several years ago, you know, we were ministering and, um, <laughs> hallelujah. 